The Memphis Bell is a B-17 heavy bomber that flew early in the strategic bombing campaign in Europe. It flew in combat from November of 1942 to May of 1943, and when the crew finished their 25 missions, the Army Air Forces selected that aircraft and that crew to go back to the United States on a war bond tour. So in June of 1943, the Memphis Bell flew back to a triumphant return. Their first stop was in Washington, D.C., huge crowds. The Air Force leadership was there. And then they went to more than 30 locations on this war bond tour. And the Memphis Bell crew became rock stars. Everywhere they went, newspapers heralded their, their arrival. Uh, war heroes coming to our location. War heroes coming to our city. So everybody in the United States knew what the Memphis Bell was, and they knew about all the crew members in the middle of 1943. So they were essentially the rock stars of their day. But they became even more famous the next year in 1944. While the Memphis Bell was flying its combat tour, a very famous Hollywood director, William Wyler, was filming some of their operations in color film, which for World War II is pretty amazing. Well, William Wyler and his crewmen were flying in these aircraft, taking the same risks that the Memphis Bell crew and other heavy bomber crews were taking. In fact, one of those cameramen got killed uh, Lieutenant Harold Tannenbaum. So William Wyler, this famous Hollywood director, took this footage and made a movie called The Memphis Bell. And that movie premiered in 1944 and it was a hit all across the country. Uh, the Memphis Bell movie was seen in theaters from California all the way over to Maine down to Florida. I and mean, Everybody saw this movie. The exhibit that's going to open in May of 2018 is a multifaceted exhibit. Kind of at the heart will be the story of the Memphis Bell and its crew, and then around the Memphis Bell aircraft will be the larger story of strategic bombardment in Europe in World War II. And that is a multi-layered story. There's kind of the history of the strategic bombing campaign, and then there's the personal stories, not just of the bomber crewmen though, but also of uh, some of the personnel that were on the ground, armorers, mechanics and the people that uh, there's no way that this campaign could have taken place without their work. Some of the objects that have been donated by the families include the flight suit worn by Bill Winchell. He was one of the uh, gunners on the uh, Memphis Bell and so uh, to have his flight suit preserved here to know its connection to him and to the aircraft uh, is pretty amazing. And then uh, we also have the service uniform for E. Scott Miller, and uh, Scott Miller was kind of the forgotten crewman because he joined the crew uh, on about their 10th mission. So when the crew finished their 25th mission, it was his 16th. So he was not able to go back on the war bond tour. They picked another um, airman who had gotten 25 missions, only one of those on the bell. And uh, so he had to stay and continue flying, and he didn't finish his tour for about another month or month and a half. So to have some of his objects here and tell his story, since he's largely forgotten, is, is wonderful. It goes right to the core of our mission, which is to preserve and tell the story of the U.S. Air Force and the airmen who served and sacrificed in it. One of the uh, wonderful parts of the work that I do is to uh, team up with the restoration staff. The uh, restoration folks here are unbelievable. They can do anything, and, and I, I don't just say that. Um, they can do anything. They hang the aircraft here, they put them on top of the pylons, they move them, they restore them. They are amazing, amazing individuals. So with the restoration of the Memphis Bell, it really is a team effort. Um, sometimes they discover parts of the configuration that I don't know about, and in other cases I can help them with uh, configurations of some of the equipment.